Lil Bibby had one of the most unique come-ups in the game. He went from getting arrested multiple times on the corner to making hit records with major artists. But when he reached the top of the game, Bibby decided to put the mic down. His fans were disappointed. But then, Bibby shocked everyone when he discovered Juice World and changed the whole game. Here's how it all went down. Bibby came up on the east side of Chicago. His mom was on drugs, and his sister was the one who raised him. Bibby's sister was in the streets, though, so he ended up jumping off the porch at a young age. When he was 14, Bibby started getting booked on small charges. He told Vlad TV, They said I got like 60-something arrests. Wait, 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 wait. You got arrested 60-something times and you're 21 years old? Yeah. A couple times, I got locked up two times in the same day. I remember that. And even though he was running the streets, Bibby was also into basketball, and that's how he linked up with his homie, G Herbo. Bibby and Herbo eventually started making music together, but at first, they were just recording voice memos on the phone with a beat playing in the background. Back then, it was just a hobby, but people in their hood started sending the recordings around, and they picked up some buzz. Bibby never planned on being a rapper, but getting arrested so many times made him realize he had to switch something up. He told Vlad, Cause when I got locked up, like this last time, and I was just looking around like, man, and like a few young cats that was just like talking to, they was arguing for the fight over the dumbest shit. I'm just looking around like, man, I'm too smart for this shit, man. So when he got out, he decided to take rap serious and it paid off big time. G Herbo and Bibby started going to actual studios and laying down tracks instead of just recording on their phones. And it didn't take long for them to start building momentum. Chicago was already rocking with them. But when they dropped the track Kill Shit in 2012, it changed everything. The track popped off and racked up over 50 million views on YouTube, and everybody was paying attention to Bibby and Herbo. Drake shouted them out and said they were the future, and that's when Bibby realized how far he could take it. He was getting ready to drop his first mixtape, Free Crack, but he pushed it back to polish everything up and make it as hard as possible. Bibby already had a huge fan base before he even dropped a project. His singles and tracks with G Herbo had people buzzing, but he wanted his mixtape to be perfect before he released it. Even Drake hit him up and said he wanted the tape, and all the attention pushed Bibby to improve the project and add a couple more tracks. When Free Crack came out in 2013, Bibby proved he was ready to take over the game. Critics and fans loved the project, and it led Bibby to getting featured in 2014 XXL Freshman Class. Later that year, Bibby dropped Free Crack 2 with features from huge artists like Wiz Khalifa, Juicy J, and Kevin Gates. His second project racked up even more streams than the first, and everybody was rocking with it. He kept it pushing in 2015 with Free Crack 3, and by that point, the whole rap game was ready for Bibby to drop his debut album. But instead of grabbing the spotlight and leveling up his own career, Bibby decided to take a step back and launch a record label with his brother G Money. Most labels take a while to get off the ground, but Bibby's grade A productions hit the jackpot when they signed a superstar as their first artist. Bibby told Double XL that G Money discovered Juice World, and when Bibby heard the track Lucid Dreams, he thought, oh, now this is probably the best song I've heard in over 10 years. Bibby signed Juice immediately in a joint deal with Interscope. When he dropped his debut album, Goodbye and Good Riddance, in 2018, Juice became one of the hottest artists in the world and proved that Bibby knew how to spot upcoming talent. Signing Juice was huge for Bibby and the label. Two tracks off his debut album racked up over a billion streams just on Spotify, and Bibby was probably making more cash off the label than he ever did in his solo career. Bibby and G Money could have built the entire label around Juice and used his clout to bring in other artists. But tragically, Juice World died from an overdose in December 2019. Juice was flying into Chicago from LA on a private jet, but the feds had been tipped off that there were guns and drugs on the plane. Juice allegedly swallowed a bunch of Percocets to try and hide them from the cops, but his body couldn't handle it and he had a seizure. He was given two doses of Narcan to try to save him, but unfortunately, he was pronounced dead at a nearby hospital. It's not clear exactly what he took, but the autopsy revealed he had toxic levels of oxycodone and codeine in his body. Juice had struggled with addiction since a young age. He started drinking lean in the sixth grade and was popping perks and Xanax all the time. Bibby told DJ Vlad, We already had, had him signed up for rehab, and he already agreed to go. He didn't know how bad Juice's problem was at first. I found out that he was doing like four, you know what I'm saying? So I get to freaking out like, bro, what the f***? Like, I get to telling everybody like, man, look, we, we gotta send this kid to rehab. He Unfortunately, Juice didn't get the help he needed fast enough. He was taken way too soon. 
Bibby and Grade A Productions have kept Juice World's legacy alive by releasing posthumous projects, but it hasn't been an easy job. Back in June, a video of Juice's girlfriend, Ali Lottie, started going around where she talks about Juice's death. According to her, the situation ain't adding up. She said, People knew what happened the day before Jared passed and, and the day that Jared passed and everything like that, which I cannot speak upon at this moment, but I will. I will. I just have to make sure that I am safe. She also said, It's always been about money. I'm going to take it to court. But it's not clear what she thinks really went down. Bibby clapped back and tweeted, People say we don't put out enough music, but then they say we do it for the money. Juice's fans have been pressing Bibby for music ever since he died. Grade A has already put out two albums, but that hasn't stopped fans from asking for more. Bibby told one fan, I will try my best, but I am human and I have feelings. I want to put out music because I know that's what Juice wanted, but sometimes I want to quit. Losing your homie is hard enough, but Bibby's had to deal with Juice's fans too. And it's not easy to carry on someone's legacy, especially when they were one of the hottest artists in the world when they passed away. Bibby says he don't smoke, drink, or get high at all anymore. Coming up in the streets of Chicago means you have to keep your head on straight. And Bibby says every one of his homies who got killed was high when it happened. Even though Bibby left the streets behind when he started popping off in the rap game, he showed everyone he was still ready for the smoke when he and G Herbo started throwing hands with security at a club in Connecticut. Back in 2016, a video started going around showing Bibby handing his chain off before jumping into a massive brawl. According to a bouncer at the club, it all started when the young brother of Bibby's bodyguard wasn't let into the VIP room. Nobody at the club knew who he was, so when he tried to press the bouncers, they put him on the floor. After the show, the brother told Bibby and the rest of the crew what happened, and that's when everything popped off. Bibby, G Herbo, and their whole team started throwing hands with the club security. Luckily, Bibby and Herbo ain't catch no charges for the fight, but now they got issues with a dude from their own hood. Back in March, a dude from NLMB and No Limit Cairo did an interview with 16 Shot on Visuals and aired out Bibby and Herbo. According to Cairo, Herbo wasn't really from No Limit, but they let him rock with the crew anyway. And after he blew up, Herbo left everyone behind and didn't put dudes on like he was supposed to. He even compared Herbo to 6ix9ine and said all his bars about street activity are cap. He said, y'all type of shit he don't, he don't do. You know, he like, I'll compare him to 6ix9ine, fuck. Cairo says, Bibby ain't get back to the hood either. Lil Reese hopped on Twitter and called Cairo out for putting street business on the internet instead of facing Bibby and Herbo in person. Then Bibby clapped back by posting a photo with his new artist captioned, at No Limit Cairo Hayden, cause I keep silence to bourbon kids, at ZZZ Sam. And in the comments, Bibby wrote, Cairo is my little cuz, I will slap the shit out of him. Cairo sent more shots on social media, but after that, the situation died down. Herbo's facing federal fraud charges right now, and Bibby's focused on his label and other projects, so they don't really have time for petty drama like that. But Bibby's label situation ain't too good right now either. He signed an artist named The Kid Leroy back in 2019. But last year, Leroy left the label and told Billboard, we don't talk about them. It's not clear what went down behind the scenes, but now the label only has one artist. ZZZ signed with Bibby earlier this year, but he's got a long way to go before he's big enough to carry a label. Right now, ZZZ only has around 30K monthly listeners on Spotify, but his latest video did rack up over 300K views on YouTube in less than a week. Only having a couple artists on your label can work if they're as big as Juice but ZZZ ain't even coming close to his numbers right now. Luckily, Bibby has enough money coming in from other sources that he can take his time with building the label. He told DJ Vlad, That was around the time, well, okay, I went broke. A couple thousand dollars on the sweaters, a couple thousand on outfit. You know, I look up, I look in my closet, and then I look at my bank account, I'm like, man, mm. this, this shit ain't right, you know? But now, he's investing in stocks and real estate and making money in his sleep. I look up, I buy some properties and shit, boom. I'm making more money in my sleep. I don't gotta do nothing, you know what I'm saying? So Bibby has already had a wild career, but he's only 28. Most rappers his age will still be trying to stay in the spotlight, but Bibby realized he can level up and bring in more racks off of business deals instead of rapping. But if he ever decides to hop back in the booth, he's still got a huge fan base that'll tune in for any new music he drops.